What's going on everybody? It's Brendan, Dad Planet. Welcome back to the One Man Show. So this is the last What's Sold on eBay video for the month of May. When I do the final one for the month, I show you what I sold in this 10 day period, the 22nd through the 31st. But then I also show you how I performed for the entire month, as well as what my entire cost of goods was for that month. I think it's important to be transparent. I tell it like it is, I show it like it is, I have nothing to hide. So um, those numbers are important, especially for the part-timers, just to see you know, what it is my hourly rate might be, but I disclose all of those things because I think they're pretty motivational when you add it all up and total it all up. So that's what I do this for, do it to motivate you. Hopefully you get in stores, you'll find some of this stuff, you'll make a little bit more money. So let's get into it. All right, so for this 10 day period, the 22nd through the 31st, I did just under 4,000 in gross sales, just over 2,500 in net sales. My selling cost at a perfect 30% and my average sales price went way up. It's usually around $60, so that's good. Let's take a look at how I did for the entire month. From May 1st through the 31st, I did 10, three in gross, 6,700 in net. My selling cost, again, right at around $30. My average sales price down a little bit for the month. I wasn't selling as many high dollar amount items. That's okay, these kinds of things happen. I sold a total of 201 items, which to me seems a little bit low for the month, but I only, I only spent $1,259 to achieve these. So at a very part, I shouldn't say very part-time basis because I'm staying under 25 hours a week. In fact, a lot of this was a little bit lower because my back gave out right around at the end of the month. And so I could do like literally nothing. These are pretty good numbers on a part-time basis. That's like a $55 an hour average. It should be a little bit closer to like 65, 70, but I just didn't have the gross sales to do it. As it stands, pretty good numbers. Let's get a look at these 15 bolos. All right, every now and then we'll walk into Walmart and we'll get some Pokemon packs with my daughters. We enjoy opening them. I uh, got very lucky on this one here. So the set was Vivid Voltage. Now Pokemon has reprinted this set that has long since passed. And so a lot of these Vivid Voltage cards are back into circulation. And while this card is one of the hardest ones to pull in all of the Pokemon sets, I didn't think that this would grade out at a Gem Mint 10, sending it into PSA. And it would have cost like $100 plus to have it sent in, just based on the centering of the card. And so I thought it made the most sense to sell the card raw. And so I sold it for $150, which was the going rate for this exact card that was ungraded. So this buyer is $164.85 all in. It only cost me uh, maybe $4 for the pack and it did sell in one day. So I thought it made sense because this card is only selling right now for around $350 to $400 graded in a Gem Mint 10. So I think I made the right choice on this one. All right, if you were not aware that Kizik was a Bolo brand, hit that like button because I was unaware when I sourced these at the Goodwill bins, but uh, now I know and now I look for them at every chance I get. So this is the Madrid, the Echo Knit Style shoe. This was a wide size, so I think that made it sell even quicker for me and I got full price for it at 50 bucks. This buyer is 70, 71 all in. It only cost me two to $3 because again, I did find it at the Goodwill bins and you're only buying by the pound when you source there and these sold very quickly. These sold in two days. So the gray color, the Madrid style, but Kizik in general is a shoe bolo. Make sure you look for it at every turn. All right, local rummage sale. I paid $10 for this. It's Bose Wave Music System. The model number on this one is AWRCC1. It came with all the bells and whistles. It had the remote, especially. It had like a uh, protective cover with it. So uh, maybe that made the deal a little bit sweeter for the buyer on the other end. I had this listed for 200. I took an offer of 170. They are 20232 all in. This was another fast seller. It only sold in four days and the buyer was having trouble with the remote for whatever reason. I think, I don't think I included the battery with it. The batteries look the same, those big circular ones, but they are different. There's like a 2032 model and then there's like a 2025 model. I don't know a whole lot about the batteries, but if you put one of them in that looks like all of the rest of them, it may or may not work. So you really do have to have a very specific battery for the remote. As it stands, this was a great sale, especially only having to pay $10 for it. Somebody that's got a little bit more knowledge on Fire King, Jadeite, the swirl bowl patterns in general, you're gonna have to help me out with this. So when I listed this and it's the six inch bowl, so it's a very, very small bowl, I saw 18 or so bids on a sold comparable that was bid up to like $200. I'll put the comp on the screen for you. 
and just looking at all of the other comparable solds they were in like the 20 to 30 to 40 dollar range and i couldn't really figure out why that one sold for so much so i went in and listed mine at 150 like let's just throw 150 dollars on it and see if we get any bites sure enough this thing sold for that price this buyer is 171.94 all in it only cost me two dollars at a garage sale and it only took 10 days to sell i still for the life of me cannot figure out why that was a sold comp for 200 this was a sold comp for 150 but there are hundreds selling in the 20 to 30 to 40 dollar range if you have knowledge on this and can figure out why please educate me because i have no idea thank goodness that i shot for the stars because it sold in 10 days it sold for $150. I only paid $2 for it. That's amazing. That's why I love pricing high on a lot of my items, especially if I see a sold comp that was in the close price range that I sold mine for within reason. So this was a fantastic sale. Patagonia R2 series sells very well and it sells year round. So this was one of the ones where if you're sourcing this in the summertime, get, source it, buy it and get it listed because you could most likely sell it in the summertime too. So the color on this one was Narwhal Gray. I had to you know look this up and do a lot of digging. I had it listed for $100. I took an offer of 85 and uh, this buyer is 105.85 all in. I got a bunch of Patagonia free from a woman on Facebook Marketplace. I am extremely thankful for the deal she gave me. I was like running away to my car and she flagged me down. I was like, hey, take all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Long story, it's in a previous video, but this was an amazing sale. And I still have maybe six or seven of those items left. I always price my Patagonia high. That's probably the reason it's taking a little bit longer to sell. And of course we're in summer. All right, this is an Igloo countertop ice maker. It's, you know, a little bit on the heavy side. The model number is ICE117 ss i bought this and i can't remember i put 14.99 now I, I may have paid a little bit less than that there's a couple in here that like i can't remember exactly what i paid but i i had this one listed for a hundred dollars and i took an offer of 75 so this buyer is 103.99 all in this took three months to sell I me mean, i was sourcing it uh, towards the end of February and you know knowing that summer was coming it was just a matter of time so this actually probably sold right in line with when I thought it would so I'm totally satisfied with that sale there's not a ton of comparables on this model number but ice makers in general look them up and you know they're for me they're easy to test so if you're willing to go through that and you're willing to box up and ship a little bit of a heavier item these are great all right, this is a Pioneer 300 disc changer. 300 disc changers are great because they look big and bulky, but they're light. So they don't ship as heavy as you think they will, even though, again, they're big and boxy and it looks maybe a little bit more intimidating than it actually is. So I bought this on an online auction with a bunch of other stuff. This was gonna be around 50 to $60 with all of the other things that I paid for in that lot. And I had this listed for 200 and I took an offer that I think is probably in line with one of these that does not have the remote. So I'm happy with the 150. Buyer is 187.14 all in, and it only took one month to sell. So Sony makes some great 300 disc changers. Make sure you look out for those. Again, even though they're larger, they're just not as heavy as some of the other receivers that you might come into contact with when you're out sourcing. So look a little bit closer because there's a lot of them that sell between $100 and $300. And um, listen, if you can get it for under 20 bucks, that's a steal. All right, I picked this up at a uh, local rummage sale. It's cost me $5. And the color on this one, again, it varies. It's either coastal blue or celestial blue, depending on what country you bought it in. But I, I just throughout doing my research, I had learned that I had a little bit more of a rare color. And so I priced this a little bit higher, even though I marked it pre-owned and it sold for full price pretty quickly. So I sold it for $80. The buyer is 125 all in and it only took eight days to sell. So Le Creuset teapots, you'll see a lot of them selling brand new, but pre-owned, you'll still get a good dollar amount. Again, I had a color that looks like it was harder to find or at least harder to identify, and that's the reason I decided to list it high. And so I could have very easily listed this for, you know, 30, 40, 50 dollars, but Again, under those circumstances, I'm always going to shoot for the stars. And a lot of times my stuff ends up selling for the exact price I ask. So this was a great sale. Le Creuset is a bolo like across basically all of the things that they make, but this was a rare color. So I was able to get a high dollar amount for it. All right, there are Dyson Animal models and then there's Dyson Animal Plus. And when I was doing my research at a garage sale, which is where I found this, I noticed that the Animal Plus was getting a lot more money than the regular animals, and it was also a little bit harder to find. So the price on this was $50. I paid it at the garage sale, no problem, and I was able to get $250 for it. 
on the resale market. So this buyer is $293.88 all in. It only sold in two days. But again, when you're doing your research for uh, solds, you're gonna see a lot of animal models, uh, SV10, V8, and you'll see a few Animal Plus. If you happen upon the Animal Plus, you can probably price that a little bit higher. At least that's what I would do. But even the animals are still, you know, $200, $150. And these will turn up in Goodwills every now and then. And so you'll be able to snag one for like 10 bucks, 20 bucks, again, depending on how your Goodwills price, the area that you source in. But as it stands, doing the research at the garage sale, I knew I could get at least 200 for it. And that was all I needed to make the decision. So I was happy to pay the 50 bucks. If you look right now, go into the eBay app and you search Roback as of the time of the recording of this video, there are only 39 active listings. But if you sort by solds, you'll see over 500 sales. This is one of the hottest bolos. Please keep your eye out for it. I've mentioned this in a previous video. Uh, this is the Annapolis long sleeve shirt. I listed it for 80, I sold it for 80, and this buyer is 84.98 all in. So this cost me $17. I bought a lot of three of these shirts and three Vineyard Vines, if I recall, on Facebook Marketplace for $100. As it stands, I still have one more rowback shirt to sell. And when that does, I will have tripled my money even on the $100 that I spent. So this was a, a good deal even at the price I paid on Marketplace. But please keep your eye out for rowback. You'll see the little puppy dog logo on the shirts. That's when you know you've got a rowback shirt. But this was an amazing sale. And this, again, is one of the hottest men's shirt bolos that you could possibly find. So do what I did, check Facebook and see if you can find a deal on some of them. Check Marketplace. At only 39 listings, it's not likely seemingly that they're going to turn up in stores. But what I can tell you is I've noticed on Roback's own website, they don't replenish the sizes that go out of stock very quickly if they do at all. And so I think that's why there's such a huge demand for a marketplace like eBay in the resale market. And you can still get not only a high dollar amount, you might even be able to get a higher dollar amount than what they charge brand new on their site. Please keep that in mind. Look for this brand no matter where you are, no matter where you source. All right, this is a pair of A Gold D pants. Obviously, the style is Riley, high rise straight crop. This is an in demand size and an in demand style. So, size 30 on these. Listed them for 60, got full price for these as well. Buyer is $81.94 all in. They only cost me $4.99 at a goodwill. And these took two weeks to sell. A Gold D is a fantastic brand again because I think a lot of the stores of the world, the thrift stores, haven't caught on to pricing them up and I don't expect them to anytime soon, at least in my area. Can't speak for everybody across America, but this is a wonderful brand. I've been able to source this at the Goodwill outlets. I've found them in the retail stores now, so they do turn up and it's a great brand for resale. It's so another one I can't remember the price I paid. It was a $3.99, $2.99. It was somewhere in that price range and I had it in one of my thrift run videos. Uh, not too long ago. So Three Dirty Dwarves. If you find this on the Sega Saturn, you're going to get over $100 for it. This was PC, but it was brand new and sealed. And I actually found two of them. So I have it listed for 70. I took an offer of $60 on this first one and this sold in three days. This buyer is $63.98 all in and it only took five days to sell this first one. I still have the other one left, but this was a pretty great find, especially because they are sealed. I still cannot figure out how I was able to get $40 for these corner chompers. So Crocodile is the brand and their colors vary. There's some blue options. There's, you know, I, I felt like the yellow option when I was sourcing this at the time, this was so long ago that I listed these. Uh, it was a little bit rare and I have to assume that when I was running the comps two years ago, there were comps in the 50 to $40 range. So I had these listed for $50. It took forever to sell and I finally took an offer of 40 bucks. This buyer is 53, 30 all in. They only cost me $1.99, but they did take a year and a half to sell. Yeah, yeah, like you just throw this in a bin and you forget about it and you accumulate inventory, which is kind of how my business model goes, right? I believe in growing my inventory. I don't need fast flips because when you're selling pre-owned items on eBay, you can be the best priced, you have the best pictures, have an in-demand item that's pre-owned and it will still sit. They simply do not command the traffic that Amazon does. And the Amazon market's you know more new than it is pre-owned, even though you can sell pre-owned stuff on Amazon. So I'm of the volition that you don't have to do the fast nickel slow dime thing on eBay. So just throw it in a bin and forget about it. That's what I did and it sold, so good sale. All right, you guys saw this one in one of my thrift run videos too. So an Easton Mako bat, I, the model is BB15MKT. As big of a baseball fan as I am, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to the aluminum bat market, the softball differences between softball and baseball. 
Um, I just know how to run comps and the comps said list this thing high. So I priced it at $70 sold for full price. Buyer is $93.52 all in. I paid, was it $3.99 for it? And I guess another one where you guys are going to have to check me on my prices because I think I may have even paid less, but as it stands, $4, $3, whatever. It only took nine days to sell. We are in summer. It's like mad baseball season. Bats will probably start to taper off sales wise. That does not mean don't source them. Anytime you have a good item and a good brand, you've got to pick it up basically even out of season. So don't let that information discourage you from continuing to source bats because they are still going to sell. They're just not going to like fly off the shelves like they do in uh, late March, early April. So keep that in mind. This is a wonderful sale. Okay. This is another marketplace pickup for me. I paid up, I paid $150 for it. It's a bun grinder. It's actually very compact and these are amazing. I love this brand. I love them for their commercial products, especially some of their coffee makers make good money. But this on the base of the hoppers, they were cracked a little bit, even though that didn't affect the performance. But I had to disclose that fact. And I think that's why it took a little bit longer to sell than it otherwise would have. And I, and it's also the reason I could only get $300 for it, where it probably should have sold closer to 400. So the buyer is 363, 63 all in. I had to ship this to California. So to be very, very careful. And it still only took three weeks to sell. I just think it could have been like a one or a two day thing. If um, somebody wasn't worried that those cracks would have been worse off than they were, but they were not. I had video in my description showing that it worked properly. All is good. 15 in the books. Hope you enjoyed those. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. My house is empty. Like, I don't know what to do with myself. It's like quiet. You can hear a pin drop in here. I can't tell you how exciting that is because uh, it doesn't happen often. So anyway, Brendan here, Dad Planet. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hit the like button if you liked what you saw or you learned something today. And then always consider becoming a member of the Dad Planet family by subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so that you know every single time I upload a video to YouTube. That's it. That's all I have for you. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.